in, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of Blender if you want to get into Roblox development specifically. Um, but you can use this as just a general Blender tutorial. I'm going to be showing you on the latest version of Blender, which is a little bit different from previous versions. So if you come over here and then download Blender. This is on Blender.com, by the way. I'll link it in the description. Then just download it. I'm assuming you already have Blender downloaded, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to download here. And whilst we wait for this download, please do hit the like button and subscribe. I'm going to be making more Roblox development videos here, so I, I hope you enjoy. Let me know down below in the comments if there's anything specifically you want me to make tutorials on. The only reason I'm really making this video, going through everything, is so that you guys all know how to use Blender. And if I do another tutorial in the future, I can tell you to watch this video to actually learn the basics. So that in my future tutorials, I can get straight to the point. Okay, so now once you've actually installed Blender and stuff, you should open it and see something like this. This first thing that pops up, if you see a different image here, you're probably just on a different version of Blender. This will probably work for future versions, just maybe a few changes, but nothing major. As you can see here, um, you, you can just uh, right click off here and you're in, you're in the workspace. And to move around, it's actually quite complicated. It used to be a lot easier. But if you use the, the scroll wheel on your mouse and press it down, you can kind of spin around. So this is pressing down the scroll wheel and you can do this. And to zoom in and out, you can use the scroll wheel. This is just, um, you know, to get a nice view around the cube. Another thing I forgot to mention, you can also, to move around like this, you do shift and then the scroll wheel down. So scroll wheel down to like move around and then shift and the scroll wheel down. To, to move move the camera and then this rotates you yeah so basically the two movement ways um the scroll wheel down like this and then shift and scroll wheel down to kind of like move around and pan around and to, to select stuff you use left click and there you can see got my cube selected and you can delete the cube just using the delete key or you can use x and then delete just like that and then that's that, that's that's the first thing i guess to, um, the cube and you can see here there is actually a light and a camera uh, these things aren't really needed unless you're doing gfx or something so you can just delete them if you select them select one and then hold shift you can select another this works for anything with shapes as well and then you press the delete key easy so now we've got an empty workspace here and you will probably want to know how to get shapes in. So to get shapes in, there are actually a few ways of doing this. You can come up here and use the add button and then add and then mesh. And these are all the different options you have for different meshes. Let's just select a cube here, bring back in the cube. And as you can see, it brings in this cube. And you can see like a little red dot here, and that is actually where stuff you add will go to. This is called the 3D cursor, and as you can see, you can actually move it around. And um, basically, this is if you want to say, for example, you want a cube over here. You can then go and then add, mesh, and then cube. An actual quicker way to import, and this is what I usually do. So you'll see if I do other tutorials, I'll do it this way. If I used to put my 3D cursor over here by using shift and right click. So shift and right click is how you move this 3D cursor. And then shift and A. If you do shift and the A key, then you'll see this, this menu pops up and you can add. So, you know, here we can go. Oh, we can add a cylinder. Let's add a cylinder here. So you can see here it actually puts in a cylinder. Um, pretty nice. And then this is another trick that's very useful, especially in low poly modeling. Low poly is basically just a style, like, a kind of like style of modeling and making everything as low poly as possible. A poly is basically a vert. So if I go into edit mode here by using tab, or you can come up here and go into edit mode, you can um, toggle between them, or you can use tab. I use tab just because it's a lot quicker. And you can see these little dots. These little dots are called vertices. As you can see here, by left clicking on them, I can then go and drag them. Over here on the right, there are multiple different settings, so you can rotate them, but rotating the avert does nothing. But you can see here, if I actually go and select a few of them, I can go and select a load of them and move them all at once. And this is actually how people create stuff. So you can go and use this and then use it to like create all these different shapes. And that's, that's basically how it goes. Um, yeah, a few different settings here for this. You can see here I've got verts to select, so you can you can select verts here and move them around. Or up here there are actually three options. So the one here with the dot is vertices, which is the default one. 
Come over here, this is line select. So now you can see those vertices are gone. And now you can see these lines. This is basically just, you can, you can select lines. It's pretty straightforward. And of course, the last one, that was the last one, faces. So here you can select the different faces. These are different, uh, you'd have different uses. And yeah, they're just pretty cool. And as you can see here, um, as I said, move the 3D cursor by Shift and C. But if you want this 3D cursor back in the very center, just press Shift and C. And that, as you can see, puts it back in the center. Let's delete these things and let's show you a few more tricks. So actually when you import a cylinder here, you can go down here in the bottom corner and change this pop-up. And by changing this pop-up, you have loads of properties here. You, you can adjust basically. But the main ones you are gonna want to use is the verts one. This verts one lets you change the amount of loops basically. This is how many loops you will have in the shape. And yeah, I, I think it's a pretty cool feature, you know. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. So if you want to go here, eight is a very popular number in low poly modeling. And as you can see, it, it look it, it looks cool. It does look very like lack of, like, it's got a lack of detail. However, there are, you know, uses for that is very good for performance for mobile players, especially. And if you're making a Roblox game, low poly is the way to go. And now we're gonna really get into the modeling techniques. I've now shown you most of the basics. So um, yes, we can get more to the, the, the harder stuff. So we're going to start by making sure we have selected our cylinder here. And then there's um, basically here in the top corner, there is this like thing, this view thing. And if you actually click on any of the things, it'll put you into a side view. These are very helpful when modeling because you can move stuff around super like accurately, basically. And yeah, it's just, it's just extremely useful. You can see now it is like in line. But a shorter way to do this is actually to use your numpad on your keyboard, like the, the, the numbers on the right, and do one. One puts you in this face view. One puts you in front on view, and this is probably the one you'll use the most. Then if you want to go to the side, you can do the number three on your keyboard. So you can see here, it is different having the number one and then the number three. One's the, 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 they're basically different sides. And then to go into the aerial view, do seven on the number pad. So number seven. These are just helpful for quickly going through and trying to model stuff super quickly. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use number one on the number pad here to go and see the side view. And when you're in these views, if you press down the scroll wheel, it will actually take you out of the view. However, if you do it again and press shift, you have to use shift to go around and then scroll. So it's, it's fairly simple. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to go into edit mode. And a trick here is actually to select a whole like thing faster. If you want to select this whole row like this, all you need to do is go and press, hold Alt on your keyboard and click and you've got the whole thing selected. And now we're gonna go back into side view. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna press E on our keyboard. By pressing E on our keyboard, you can see here it's actually added more of these verts. And these, this is called extruding. By extruding, you can add more verts and stuff. And then once you've extruded, we've got some extra verts here to work with. And to do stuff with them, you can do multiple shortcuts. You can just use simply this, uh, like the, the different options here. Like on the left, you can toggle through and do stuff like this, or you can scale it. Oh, that didn't work. Or you can you can scale it. <laughs> and basically, um, I, I prefer to use shortcuts. So the shortcuts are, if you want to rotate something, just press R. So by pressing R, you can see it rotates. It's pretty cool. By pressing S, it will scale it. And by pressing G, it will move it. So it, they're super simple shortcuts you could be using. So here, now we can use the S key to scale it in. And then we can press E again to extrude more. And we can then press S again to go and scale down more. So we've now got like a nice little, a nice little, I don't even know what this is. It's a, a bump, I guess. <laughs> it's just a bit random. But yeah, that is a, a basic bit of modeling. So for example, we wanted to make this a weird rocket ship. If we look under here, we can go and select it again and then go into edit mode and alt click. So we do the alt click trick to select all these verts. And then to get like that uh, hole in a rocket ship, what you can do is press the I key. By pressing the I key, it, it lets you basically, it's similar to extrude. However, extrude adds more and goes down. Whereas I, it will go inwards. And then by doing this I, you can then come inwards. And by pressing E to extrude, you can extrude inwards and then kind of get that effect inside that a rocket ship would have. I don't know why we're building a rocket ship now. It doesn't even look like a rocket ship. But then you can start doing stuff like making it more cartoony and playful by using stuff like scaling like this and this, and then getting a more cool look. But th that's, that's very simple. 
but there's not much else to know as the complete beginner to Blender. This is all the tools you should really need to start getting and making your very first models in Blender. So you can just use yeah, shortcuts, get used to shortcuts. They make everything really, really fast. And they're just really helpful learning how to use shortcuts, you know, how to make some cool stuff. And yeah, it just, it just helps a lot knowing all this stuff. And just before you go, I'm gonna show you one more thing. The last helpful thing when modeling, as you can see here, we're in this like solid view. We can see just like a gray cube. However, if you come up to the top right here, you'll see there is four different options. The main two you will need as a beginner are these first two. This is the solid one right now, and then wireframe. Wireframe, as you can see here, is actually pretty cool. It's like you, ha you have, basically you can see through everything, and then you can toggle between them. And the other two, I'll tell you now, this one is texture view, as you can see here. It's a bit lighter, but basically this, if you apply the texture, which we have no texture applied, you can see textures, and then rendered. This is rendered view, and rendered view is when you've got textures and lights and loads of fancy stuff. So just, until you learn to texture, you'll literally only need these two uh, views, and you can toggle between them by using the Z key. You press and hold Z, and you can kind of like move around. So you see material preview and rendered, but yeah, you just want to be using solid and wireframe. It's, yeah, they're, they're, they're the, the two, begin the things like I, I don't know what else to tell you now that's it for the video please leave a like subscribe i could do a part two going into more intermediate stuff if you guys like this video let's see if we hit like 50 likes i'll do uh, a part two where i will go through all the intermediate stuff yeah that's about it i'll see you in the next video